How many have you forgiven today? Chapter 28, For What It's Worth, Part 2. The meeting is finally over. Anon, Celestia, and Luna stand outside of the meeting room beside one another. Every creature gives both sisters a nod and bow before moving on to their carriages, so that they may return to their countries. While standing by Celestia, Anon is surprised when a few of the leaders also stop to give him a bow before leaving. He honestly thought most of them forgot he even existed, seeing as he didn't speak once the meeting started. Anon can only assume they're doing this out of respect, which is fine by him. The meeting though? That was as complicated and boring as he thought it would be. However, there were some interesting points to take note of, such as how Celestia and Luna handled the topics at hand. Luna was always firm and adamant when making her points, even forgoing pleasantries and simply laying out how she saw the situation. Celestia, on the other hand, played to a different tune. She would listen carefully, saying almost nothing during the entire conversation, taking information that she found useful and playing it against others as a way to maintain order. After all, how could you argue with yourself? So after many hours, Celestia in the end was right. The borders were maintained by the end of the meeting. The only real changes made were those involving trading routes. Leaders exchanging money to allow their people to freely pass between borders with no trouble. Even some paying extra to ensure common routes were cleared of obstructions or even dangers, such as wildlife and bandits. Anon is brought from thought as a face enters his vision. It's the female diamond dog from before, Onyx. She gives him a toothy grin and offers her paw for him to shake. He does so without hesitation, but is surprised when she leans forward and whispers something into his ear. Good job protecting the princesses, but I suggest you leave these meetings to the experts. He knew that it was rather obvious, but having her confirm it makes it all the more real. They knew he was lying, but he was right in his assumption that they couldn't rightfully call him out on a story. So, they kept silence. Onyx didn't appear to stand on any side, as he told his story and what she's telling him now sounds like honest advice. A pleasure meeting you, Onyx. Anon says, pulling away from her. That grin is still on her face. You too. With that said, Onyx walks towards the front of the castle. Once everyone is out of sight, Anon takes a moment to let out a sigh of exhaustion as his shoulders slump. Keeping up that front for so long was actually challenging in a way. It's been a while since he's had to keep his mask on for so long. When he looks up, he notices Celestia is intentionally facing away from him, her demeanor a cause for concern. Is everything alright? Anon asks. Celestia shakes her head some. I should have known they would try to use you. She stomps her hoof in anger. I knew that, and I still put you in that situation. Anon understands where she's getting at. Sure, the meeting was rather intense at the start, but Anon didn't really think of it as that big of a deal. At least, not for her to worry so much over it. I'm fine, Tia. Nothing happened, right? He is right, sister. It all played out in the end. Luna tries to comfort her sister as well. That's not the point! She slams her hoof onto the ground again. You two don't get it! Most of those creatures are no friend of Equestria. They are always looking for leverage. If they tried to take Anon away because they thought he was of value... Celestia clenches her teeth, as she can't even finish that thought. Anon can't deny that Celestia is right in that regard. If they thought Anon was just some weird animal, they could have taken him for experiments. However, experimenting on sapient creatures is highly frowned upon, and that's why they held their tongue when he told his story. Not to mention, if he was just an animal, and Celestia didn't want to give him to them, then they could have demanded anything, even start a war. Still, Anon thinks Celestia shouldn't be worried about this. Anon walks up to her and pulls her into an embrace. He feels her jump slightly at his touch, but soon settles into his arms. You heard that, Griffin. Anon says. They knew I was here, so chances are they would have asked you about me regardless if I was there or not. Not that I doubt you'd come up with an excuse, but I'm sure hearing one from me was a bit more effective. At the very least, they couldn't outright deny what I was telling them. Celestia's heart hurts. 
She knows that Anon is right, but that doesn't help calm the pain she feels. Her love for him is not only clouding some of her thoughts, but also putting him into unnecessary situations. Even her sister didn't question Anon coming to the meeting, even though there was a clear danger of him being there. She must start thinking critically about whatever she does, so that Anon will never be put into harm's way. I just... Celestia tries to find the right words to say. You already have a lot on your plate. I should be more considerate in what may add to it. Anon shakes his head some. That's just like Celestia, worrying about how he feels instead of herself. Celestia is the one that should be worrying about less, and Anon has done little to help her in that department. If anything, his interactions with Twilight put untold amounts of stress on Celestia. It should be Anon that's worried about what's on Celestia's plate. She's a leader of a country, and also deals with a lot in her daily life. It's not like he hasn't thought about what bothers her, it's just... There's been a lot going on this past week. I'm fine, Tia. Anon speaks gently, as he strokes her mane a bit. It was an interesting meeting. Sure, the start could have been better, but all that stuff is over now. Luna's right. It worked out in the end. Luna nods at Anon. What he says is true, sister. I'm sure the story will keep them from further questioning Anon's existence. At least for the time being. Though, I doubt any amount of investigating would prove fruitful. Anon lets go of Celestia, and can see that she's calmed a bit. Though, he can see she's still very concerned about him. If you're so bothered by it, then I'll take a few minutes to myself. Walk around the castle to clear my head. Anon looks out a nearby window to see it's already dark. We'll meet back at your room. That seems to help a bit with Celestia's mood, as she gives him a nod. Yes, that sounds like a plan. Do not take long. Luna adds. That's fine by me. Anon says, giving them a wave as he walks off down the hall in no particular direction. It's so quiet now. Twilight is still standing in a room, exactly where she was when Spike left. It's been a few hours now, and he's not coming back. The only thing she can hear now is the sound of her own breath. She has no idea if she's been crying or not, as time had started to slip away from her. Her eyes hurt, as if she's been crying and yet there are no watermarks on the floor. She doesn't even know if she feels sad anymore. Right now, at least, she's stuck inside of a maze, one of her own creation. The walls are made of pure stone, not a single one looks any different than the other it's connected to. She's lost inside of her own mind, and she's exhausted, as if she's been searching for the exit this entire time and only managed to get herself lost deeper within this maze. She doesn't know what to do anymore. Everything she cares for is gone. So what does she have now? Twilight thinks back to when things were perfect. Back when she lived in Ponyville, before the punishment. Even before Anon was there. Where did it all go wrong? She thinks back to her fight with Discord, how Anon appeared and how they feared that he was perhaps a part of Discord's plan. In many ways, the fear never did get better. At least, not for Twilight. In the back of her mind, it was always there, wondering, questioning his appearance. Even after he survived the blast from the elements, she was still worried that it was only a fluke. After all, that blast did have an effect on him. It hurt him which had to mean something. If any pony else was hit by that blast, it wouldn't have caused any reaction. Yet it did for Anon. She buried these thoughts back then, and yet over time they manifested into something far more sinister. Something she couldn't control. She remembers the talks they had. The world he spoke of, everything about it sounded chaotic. If Anon told her that his world was created by Discord, she'd believe him. That's how crazy the place sounded. Perhaps it was that fear that drove her to experiment on him. She doesn't know, but what she did haunts her now. She truly thought she was doing it for the sake of Equestria, but in reality, it was because of her own paranoia. The walls seem to loom over her now as she covers her head in sorrow. Please, someone save me. Twilight whispers to herself 
as she's left trapped in her own mind. So here Anon is now, walking down the hall to clear his thoughts. Despite every wall looking the same, he knows where he is. Though where he's going is still unknown to him. His mind is elsewhere, thinking over the meeting that happened. That meeting put Anon into contact with a lot of creatures he never knew existed, and some that were far different than the ones he's met. Onyx comes to mind for him as she looks nothing like the diamond dogs he's met. It makes him wonder if their race is anything like the breeds from his world. Perhaps there are different breeds of diamond dog? If they do eat meat, which Anon has a strong feeling they do, if Onyx's teeth were any indication, then perhaps some breeds hunt, others dig, so on and so forth. That would make as much sense as he can get from this world, so he'll take it. The fact is, Anon doesn't even want to question some of the other creatures he saw, the Minotaur being the biggest gripe he has. At least in his world's legend, a Minotaur was the mixing of a human and a bovine. So how could a creature like that exist here without any humans to begin with? A fruitless endeavor, one of which he will probably never find an answer to. At least that Minotaur didn't think Anon was some kind of weird god, or forerunner, if you will. So for the most part, everything worked out in the end. Hmm. Maybe the clearing his head thing was actually a good idea. He feels a bit better getting all that stuff out in the open. Though that feeling is soon gone as he feels something bump into him from a low angle. So low that he almost trips over whatever he walked into. Anon catches himself and looks down to see Spike, of all things. He's currently stopped dead in his tracks as his head rests against Anon's leg. Spike, the hell is he doing out here so late at night? A lot of messes to clean up, and it seems like one mess being cleaned up leads to another being made. Anyways, let's get on to our clean donators. Top donators are 630, Badass Waffle, Only One Thing, Super Orion, Iron Sky, and Jesse Smith. Darkside Raiden Normals, Black Moon Heart, Pastel Skies, Austin Rollins, Two Hex, Sword Brother, Omar, Jordan, Omicron Library, Windside Nanny, 52, Will, Chris, Twinkie, Rise, Soul, Shadow Moon, Luigi, 88, Chancellor, Crust, Big Smoke, 369, Bobcat, GGF, and many more fabulous people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.